SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell just promised NASA something that changes the entire moon race. After meeting with NASA's acting administrator, she delivered one message. If there's a holdout for Artemis III, it's not going to be U.S. But why is SpaceX so confident when Starship hasn't even reached orbit yet? What breakthrough are they hiding that makes China's 2030 timeline suddenly look too late? Today, we're revealing what happened in that meeting and why this single promise might have just ended the space race before it truly began. When Gwynne Shotwell looked NASA's acting administrator in the eye and said, it's not going to be us holding up Artemis III, she wasn't making a desperate promise. She was revealing a technical revolution that's been happening in secret at Starbase. Here's what few people realize. While China celebrates their recent pad abort tests and lunar simulations, SpaceX has quietly solved the three engineering nightmares that have plagued every previous space program attempting deep space missions. First breakthrough. The Raptor 3 engine crisis is over. Previous Starship flights suffered engine failures on nearly every mission, a death sentence for crew safety. But Raptor 3 represents a fundamental redesign philosophy. Think of upgrading from a Formula One race car that breaks down every few laps to a Toyota that runs 200,000 miles without major repairs. The engineering data shows simplified fuel injectors, reduced part count, and dramatically improved thermal management. And here's what's truly remarkable. SpaceX is already testing these units for integration into version 3 prototypes appearing at Starbase right now. But the real game changer is breakthrough number two, They've cracked the heat shield puzzle that Elon Musk himself called one of humanity's final obstacles to becoming multiplanetary. Those 18,000 ceramic tiles protecting Starship during atmospheric re-entry, they've been completely reimagined with new materials, active cooling systems, and revolutionary metallic tile integration. The goal isn't just survival, it's achieving airline-like turnaround times between flights. We'll come back to why this matters for China's timeline in just a moment. Third breakthrough, and this is where things get absolutely fascinating, orbital refueling at massive scale. This isn't about pumping gas in your driveway. We're talking about transferring hundreds of tons of cryogenic fuel between two spacecraft traveling at 17,500 miles per hour in the vacuum of space. The physics would make Newton's head spin. Liquid methane and oxygen behave completely differently in microgravity. Surface tension, thermal dynamics, Fluid behavior all changed dramatically. Yet SpaceX estimates they can master precision docking and automated fuel transfer systems that dwarf anything ever attempted. Here's the shocking number. SpaceX will need more than 10 tanker flights to fully fuel a single Starship bound for the moon. That means 10 perfect launches, 10 precision rendezvous, 10 flawless fuel transfers, all before attempting the actual lunar mission. But there's a detail most experts are overlooking that changes everything about China's position. This leads to a remarkable discovery that explains Shotwell's confidence and why China's methodical approach might have just backfired spectacly. While Beijing celebrates incremental victories, their June Mengzhou spacecraft abort test, their August lunar lander simulation, they're playing checkers while SpaceX is playing 3D chess. And here's the strategic miscalculation China doesn't see coming. China's Long March 10 rocket represents excellent traditional engineering. Two launches per lunar mission, proven technology, careful government oversight. Their approach could reliably land Chinese astronauts on the moon by 2030. Under normal circumstances, that would be a stunning achievement. But these aren't normal circumstances. What happens when your competitor isn't just trying to reach the same destination? They're building a highway while you're perfecting the horse and buggy? Here's why this changes everything. A fully operational Starship system doesn't just beat China to the moon. It makes their entire lunar program strategically irrelevant overnight. Consider the brutal mathematics. China's Long March 10 can deliver approximately 27 tons to lunar orbit after two launches and complex orbital assembly. A single fully-fueled Starship delivers over 100 tons to the same destination. That's not incremental improvement. It's the difference between sending a research team and establishing a permanent city. And here's what few people realize about the timeline implications. If SpaceX proves orbital refueling by mid-2026, 
They don't just win the race to return humans to the moon. They instantly control the economics of everything that follows. Lunar-based construction, asteroid mining, Mars missions, deep space exploration, all of it becomes dependent on whoever controls the cheapest, highest capacity transportation system. China would face a choice, abandon their independent lunar program and buy rides on American spacecraft, or spend decades trying to match SpaceX's capabilities. But there's something even more significant happening that most industry analysts are missing. Dean Chang's warning that China might land first isn't just about national pride. It reveals a fundamental misunderstanding of what this race has become. The real competition isn't about planting flags anymore. It's about proving which technological philosophy can sustain permanent human presence beyond Earth. China's careful, government-controlled approach offers predictability but limited scalability. SpaceX's revolutionary approach promises to make space access routine rather than historic. Industry insiders know something the public doesn't. China's recent acceleration of testing isn't confidence. It's panic. Their increased pace of lunar simulations and rocket tests suggests they've realized the same thing Shotwell told NASA. The traditional space race timeline just got completely rewritten. And this is where the story takes an unexpected turn that explains why Shotwell was so confident. What's really happening here goes far beyond moon landing, bragging rights. It's about SpaceX executing a strategic master plan that turns China's methodical timeline into a massive disadvantage. Here's what's truly noteworthy. While China focuses on perfecting their 2030 lunar landing, SpaceX is simultaneously building the infrastructure for Mars missions. Every Starship test flight, every orbital refueling demonstration, every heat shield iteration serves both lunar and Martian objectives. Think about the strategic implications. If SpaceX delivers on Shotwell's promise and proves orbital refueling works for Artemis III, they instantly validate the core technology needed for Mars expeditions. China would face the nightmarish scenario of achieving their moon landing goal only to discover America has already established the transportation system for the next phase of space exploration. But there's a detail most people overlook that makes this even more significant. SpaceX's planned 25 Starship flights in 2026 aren't just about testing, they're about building operational redundancy and institutional knowledge at unprecedented scale. Why would SpaceX accept such an ambitious timeline? Because Musk's Mars settlement timeline depends entirely on proving these technologies work reliably and cheaply. The moon isn't SpaceX's destination, it's their proving ground for the transportation system that could make humans a truly multiplanetary species. Here's what happens if Shotwell delivers on her promise. America doesn't just return to the moon first. They establish a permanent technological advantage that could last generations. Every successful orbital refueling operation, every rapid starship turnaround, every ton of cargo delivered to lunar orbit builds toward Mars capabilities that China won't be able to match without decades of development. The economic implications are staggering. Traditional space agencies spend billions per mission using expendable rockets. If SpaceX proves rapid reusability with massive payload capacity, they could reduce lunar cargo costs by orders of magnitude, making their system the obvious choice for any nation wanting to establish lunar operations. But what if Shotwell's confidence is misplaced? What happens if the technical challenges prove insurmountable within the 2027 timeline? That's exactly what makes this moment so fascinating. China's steady, methodical approach suddenly becomes the smart strategy if SpaceX's revolutionary technologies fail to materialize. The next 18 months will determine whether American ambition triumphs over Chinese discipline or whether trying to revolutionize space travel and win a lunar race simultaneously proves to be one bridge too far. Either way, Shotwell's meeting with NASA marked the moment when the space race transformed from a sprint to the moon into a marathon toward permanent space civilization. China has built an excellent program for visiting the moon. SpaceX is betting they can build the highway system for living beyond Earth. The clock is ticking toward 2027, and humanity's multiplanetary future hangs in the balance. This is exactly why Shotwell's promise to NASA represents more than confidence. It reveals SpaceX's master plan to leapfrog an entire generation of space technology while China perfects the previous one. 
What this means is that we're witnessing the most significant strategic pivot in space exploration since Apollo. While China builds an excellent program for visiting the moon, SpaceX is constructing the transportation infrastructure that could make lunar operations routine and Mars missions inevitable. The real genius isn't just in the engineering, it's in the timing. By 2027, we'll know whether American innovation can deliver revolutionary space capabilities faster than Chinese discipline can achieve incremental progress. Either outcome reshapes humanity's path to becoming a multiplanetary species. And this is just the beginning. The next 18 months will bring crucial starship flights, orbital refueling tests, and China's accelerated timeline responses. We're about to see which approach, revolutionary risk or methodical progress, defines the next chapter of human space exploration. How do you think this technological race will impact humanity's long-term presence in space? Will SpaceX's ambitious timeline prove achievable, or does China's steady approach offer better odds for sustainable progress? This is Space Hub, and we dive deep into the breakthroughs that are reshaping our cosmic future. If you want more analysis like this that goes beyond the headlines, hit subscribe. For the latest developments in this unfolding space race, you know where to find us. The next two years will determine whether we remember 2027 as the year America secured the transportation system for space civilization or the year ambition met reality.